friends, this is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Friends, it is Pride Sunday. Today is the day that we celebrate that God created all of humankind in a wonderful rainbow, a spectrum of ways to identify, and that all are equally beloved and created in the image of God. Let us turn to the events of this coming week. Today we have our final reunion for our children, our church school children. Please join us. We will be doing a planting project here at the Congregational Church. We also have our upcoming uh, Seekers Meditation and Prayer next Thursday. We will continue to have worship in the sanctuary on July 4th. Come and celebrate with us. There are many ways to get involved in the life of the church, even though things are winding down a little bit over the summer. You could be on our social justice and witness listserv. You could certainly join our prayer team. You could be involved in some of the other things that are going on. Just read your e-news and see ways that you can connect. Friends, God loves us all equally. We are so grateful to be here today. So let us now come together to worship our God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's so good to be with you. I hope everybody is doing okay. It's so great to be with you today, especially because today is a day filled with celebration. Of course, I wanna say great job to everybody who just finished up a school year. And a special congratulations to all our fifth graders and kindergartners who just graduated. And we get to celebrate the summer and so many of you going to summer camps and going on vacations and spending time with family and people that we love. And we get to celebrate all the cool things that are happening right here at church. The end of an amazing church school year three reunion weekends here at church for us to get together and be together and have fun. And the start of the phasing in of our in-person worship and our reopening. There's so much to celebrate. And of course, today we celebrate Pride. Pride Sunday is such an amazing day in the life of our church because we get to celebrate so many gifts that God has given us. The gift of love, the gift of acceptance, other people accepting who we are and us accepting ourselves. We get to celebrate that we're all different, that we look different and act different and talk different and we live our lives differently and that there's beauty in that, in the difference and the diversity, because we remember that we are all part of God's creation. And when we know that God created us just as we're meant to be, we feel, well, free. That's what our scripture talks about today. Our scripture talks about how when you know that you've been made in the image of God, that should make you feel free. It should make you feel happy. It should give you hope. So many good things to celebrate, but there's more. This flag that I'm waving here is a symbol of the LGBTQ pride movement. This flag has been with our movement since the very beginning. And on this flag, there are six colors. Did you know that all these colors represent something else that we can celebrate? They do. I even have a book about it. Should we read it together? Let's do it. The book is called Rainbow, a first book of pride. Rainbows. Every color means something. Red means 
life. Today we celebrate the gift of life. Orange is healing. Today we celebrate the gift of healing. Yellow is sunlight. We definitely want to celebrate the gift of sunlight. Green is nature. Today we celebrate nature. Blue is harmony. Violet is spirit. Everybody loves rainbows. Rainbows make the world smile. Rainbows sing out. Be happy. Be love. Be proud. Rainbows are so colorful and beautiful. Nature's way of smiling at us all. Rainbow flags are happy too. They celebrate love, hope, diversity, and acceptance. Waving the flag says, this is who I am. And I stand proud. Happy Pride. Friends, I hope you can all find ways today to celebrate how beautifully and wonderfully made you are. And that when we all stand together with all our beautiful differences and diversity, we become this beautiful rainbow of God's magnificent creation. Happy Pride. Let us pray. Holy and life-giving God, we give thanks for a season of celebrations for the end of our school year and our church school year, for a exciting summer that awaits us, and a chance to celebrate all your gifts and the diversity of your creation. And most of all, that we are loved. Be with us this day. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.
This reading is the Beatitudes, a litany by the Reverend Anne B. Day. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God, our center, we are grateful for your presence within and among us. May all that we are and do arise from our love for you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God, our comfort, be with all whose hearts are filled with grief. Let Christ's peace uphold them. May we bear with them the burden of sorrow and bring to them faith's message of hope. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. God, our inspiration, may we have the mind of Christ as we relate to one another. Let love be our guide and reconciliation our desire. May people of every color and class, age and ability, sexual and gender orientation, be truly welcomed and valued among us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. God, our advocate, let our righteousness be born not of arrogance, but of yearning to do your good will. May we hunger for churches where all belong, where diversity of humanity and unity in Christ create community and promote justice. May we thirst for right relationship with you and all our neighbors. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. God, our refreshment, as your forgiveness restores us, so may we offer the blessing of restoration to those who wrong us and accept it from those we have wronged. Help us to find our way when the paths of justice and compassion seem to diverge. Give us hearts ever open to mercy's possibilities. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. God, our hope, plant deep in us the longing for a world where your children do not suffer and where nations do not battle. May we pray peace, make peace, live peace. Amen. This reading is from the Epistle to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, am telling you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obliged to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. You were running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? Ah, what a blessing it is to be here in this virtual space, in this virtual time. Ah, this is so wonderful to be with you on this day. I give honor to the spirit of Christ. Oh, God's spirit is here. There is such a sweet, sweet spirit in this space, in this place. And I give honor to my friend, my colleague, my sister, one who I'm serving with on the board of directors with the Metropolitan Association of the United Church of Christ, Reverend Dr. Kelly. I'm just so happy to be here with you and your family. I do lift up Lucy and John, always great to see you whenever we get together and grateful for the time we've served together. And I also lift up you, Reverend Joya, and your family, uh, grateful that we have had the opportunity to serve on committees here in this association. I do bring you greetings. I bring greetings to the Scarsdale congregation from the congregation I serve, Safe Haven United Church of Christ, located in the heart of Ridgewood, Queens, New York, and blessed to be here among you. I'd like to start off today by reading just a verse of scripture found in the book of Galatians chapter five, verse one. And it says, it is for freedom 
that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Let us pray. Merciful, mighty, awesome God, grateful to you, loving you, loving on you, because God, you have first loved us and you love on us all the time. Oh, you take delight in we, your children, all your true children, the diversity of your entire creation. And we sing forth, burst forth with songs of praise to be here on this Pride Sunday. Now, oh God, I ask that you speak through these lips of clay. Speak, oh God, so that your sermon will be delivered. Speak, oh God, so that your message will be received. Speak, oh God because we, your children, are listening. So let the words of my mouth and the collective meditations of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight. For God, you and you alone are our rock and redeemer. Amen. Ah, free at last. Yeah, free indeed. Freedom, it is Pride Month. Today is Pride Sunday, and I take pride in being free. Pride is a time of celebration. Pride is a time bursting with love. Pride is a time to celebrate love. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes, says the psalmist. This is the day the, that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. That means we no longer need to wallow around in the gutter of self-pity, moral malaise, or psychological depression. We need to look to the one whom the psalmist says is the lifter of our heads, giving us cause to pause, praise, and give thanks for a celebration of pride. Apostle Paul understood what it meant to celebrate the life, the ministry, the death, and resurrection of the risen, risen Savior, a brown-skinned Palestinian Jew. Apostle Paul understood the world-transforming religion of Jesus that resonated and echoed with joy and the sound of freedom. Jesus enjoyed the lively, friendly, congenial, and convivial spirit of his religion, his fellowship creating religion, a religion that is a lively, fiery, joyful encounter with God. And we, the people of the resurrection, we walk in resurrection power. We are a people who walk in victory and we live with hope. We are no longer bound nor shackled by chains of oppression, repression, and depression. For freedom, Christ has set us free. The apostle says that to the early church, to the early Christians, the church folks from the communities in Galatia. For freedom, Christ has set us free, preaches Paul in the Galatian community of Antioch of Pisidia, where many came to believe. You are free indeed, Paul writes, to the Galatian community, community of Iconium, where Paul and Barnabas preached and many Jews and Gentiles came to believe. In the Galatian community of Lystra, where a man was healed, people thought Paul and Barnabas were human incarnations of the Greek gods, Hermes and Zeus, or the Roman gods, Mercury and Jupiter, but Paul and Barnabas say, no, 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 no. We are only human, but for freedom, Christ has set you free. You are free indeed. In Derby, a secluded city in Galatia, Paul preaches and made many disciples. And it didn't matter whether the place was a commercial city or a secluded city, or whether they were Jews or Gentile or pagan worshipers, Paul lifted up the banner of freedom to these early church folks in Galatia. Paul's book, you should read it sometime, called Galatia, is the Magna Carta of the New Testament. It is the theological book of 
rights. It is God's definition of a new world order. It is the church's declaration of radical independence. It is a book that emphatically proclaims our freedom in Christ. Paul says for freedom, Christ has set you free. Don't you just love the gospel Paul preaches? You have Peter and all the other apostles. Oh, they're preaching the gospel as well, but they are preaching to those of their own cultural, linguistic, theological and ethnic specifications. They went preaching only to the Jews. Oh, but Paul was preaching the gospel of liberation. He was leaping continents, breaking down walls, knocking down barriers, and opening the doors of the church to the Greeks and the Romans and the Africans and women and children and anybody, whosoever will, anybody who would accept that he or she had already been accepted by God in Jesus Christ. Now we can do a whole lot of arguing and debating and discussion and cussing about Paul's doctrinal stance on one issue or another, but when it comes to the gospel and the freedom in Christ, Paul is clear. For freedom, Christ has set you free. While legislative bodies sit around trying to determine how to legislate bodies, place shackles on bodies, and restrict bodies from the freedom that comes in Christ, Paul preaches the powerful, liberating message that in Christ you are free. You are free to know God, to be in relationship with God, that you can feel God, possess God, experience God, and be possessed of God. You can be filled with God's spirit, blessed by God's goodness, lost in God's love, used in God's service. You are free. There is no man or woman or government or ruling entity that can tell us that we are not included in God's peculiar plan of affirmative action. Jesus made the way out of no way so that nobody need to tell us about status or position in God for at Calvary, Jesus made the way so that we could enter into resurrection grace by his power of divine unconditional love. What good news Paul preached to the churches in Galatia. He preached that salvation is from God. He preached that liberation was not to be subjected to the capricious whims that restrict people on the basis of the color of our skin, the orientations determining our mutual attractions, the language we use to community, communicate. Freedom is there for any person who be in Christ. For that person is a new creation. That person is a new creature. What an awesome message Paul preached. All the liberating gospel message heard had edified the churches in Galatia. It was the kind of good news that tears down human divisions and declares us all children of the most high God. It was pride day for the churches in Galatia to hear the preaching of the apostle boldly proclaim that in Christ you become a bona fide citizen of a brave new world, that in Christ you receive a passport and a visa stamped with the Holy Ghost, and that in Christ you can go anywhere and love anybody and do anything that will lift up God, that will bring justice to the world and freedom to people, not just a handful of people, a few people, but all people. The problem arose when Paul left Galatia. He went to further the gospel in other places, as was his calling. And after he left, people of a Jewish Christian persuasion, they were called Judaizers, began undermining the hope the Galatians had grabbed hold of. Although they had been brought into a new and positive and wonderful, joyful, liberating and transformative relationship with God. They began to listen to what these Judaizers were saying. They listened as these false apostles began criticizing and discrediting the freedom and the faith into which the Gentiles of Galilee had been called. Even though they had been baptized according to their faith and freedom of consciousness, they began asking, 
free at last? Even though Paul had preached, they were free indeed. Even though Paul had preached the freedom in Christ where walls are broken down, barriers are gone, restrictions are removed, shackles are broken, dungeons are shaken, chains are dissolved, and that you are free indeed, even though Paul had preached about the great freedom given to all, the freedom in Christ that lifts us up and over those walls of racial, cultural, sexual, political, and ideological barriers that separate you from me and us from them and people from people, even though Paul preached a gospel of inclusion where all people are your people and all churches are your churches and all places are your home and all problems are your challenges to solve them. These young Galatian Christians wondered if they were really free at last. They thought they faced the onslaught of dogma. It, it was a raw, rash and rabid dogma against Paul's message of radical inc inclusivity. Oh, Paul, the message they say is too broad. Galatians, your hope in Christ is simply not enough. Galatians, your clinging to Calvary misses the mark. That gospel message Paul preached to y'all is just too universal, too inclusive, too liberal. You got to be a good Jew to be a good Christian. You've got to be circumcised in order to be saved. You got to do this or you got to do that in order to receive salvation. And those Galatians listen to those so-called preachers, tell our evangelists, teachers and apostles, tell them that Paul didn't know what he was saying. Paul didn't know what he was talking about. How dare Paul preach such a blasphemous message about the radical God gospel of Christ, the gospel of liberation. What is that? That people are free? That people can think for themselves? That's just too universal. That's just too inclusive. That's just way too radical. Well, I just stopped by today, Scarsdale, and to anybody under the sound of my voice to tell the church of Jesus Christ, we who are Native American, we who are first people, people of African, Asian, and Euro descent, whether bi gender, cis gender, transgender, intersex, asexual, LGBTQIA, PP, and well beyond what has not even yet been named, identified, or known on this Pride Sunday. You remember that God loves us with an everlasting love. You remember that we have been liberated by God's grace through faith. You keep in mind that we need to have the faith and conviction of that man who was born blind. I don't know if you're familiar with that story, but you look it up when I'm finished here. He's the man who Jesus mixed his spit with dirt and slapped the spit-filled salve on the man's eyes. And then Jesus instructed the man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man did as Jesus instructed. And when he did it, he came back walking. He didn't need anybody to lead him around anymore. He didn't need his white cane anymore. He wasn't falling and stumbling and falling anymore because now he could see. He had pep in his step, action in his traction, nitty in his gritty. He went walking home, probably singing that song, here comes the hot step up. People started congregating and asking, how did it happen? How could a man born blind receive his sight? And he said, oh, I'm the man who met a man named Jesus who rubbed some medicinal mud over my eyes. Then he told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And when I opened my eyes, I could see. They tried to line up his story, his miracle with their minuscule, myopic, microscopic theological understanding about who God is and what God can do and whom God will do it two and four. And they said Jesus's act of healing was at the wrong time. It happened on the wrong day. It was based on the wrong theology because he practices our sanctified religion in the wrong way. And I've learned whom the son has set free 
is free indeed. The man said, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. I don't know about the man's theology. I don't know about when the man worships. I don't know about how he practices worship. But this one thing I do know is that whereas I was blind, but now I see that's the message on this Pride Sunday. Whereas I was blind, now I see. Whereas I was tormented, I've been given peace. Whereas I was chained and I was bound, I have been set free. Paul preached, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand fast, stand firm in that freedom. So when anybody asks, asks you, why do you act the way you act? Why do you sing so happily and joyfully? Why do you lift your hands and give God praise? Why do you do a dance when you're feeling joy down in your soul? When if anybody asks you, what's the matter with you? You can say, I am free at last, free at last. Thank God almighty, I am free indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, will you please enter with me into a spirit of prayer. Today I offer Pride Day prayers that are adapted by, from Elliot Newman's original Pride Day prayers. Let us pray. God of vast and diverse creation, you reveal yourself to us in every color of the rainbow. From your covenant with Noah to the rainbow around your thrones in Revelations, you have spoken to us across all spectrums, in all colors, and we are grateful that we can see you in so many places and in everyone's faces. In the beginning, God, you made the heavens and the earth and everything in between. You made animals and humans of many sexual and gender designations. And since the earliest days, you have made human diversity manifest. Since the beginning, you have shown yourself to us in love. Forgive us, God, for trying to put your love in a box. In the beginning, you made birds to fill the sky and fish to fill the sea. You made plants and animals as diverse as trees and terriers. And in your creativity, you made plants that could reproduce on their own, fish whose sex could change over the span of their lives, and birds with a panoply of social genders. In your great wisdom, you have made us the same creating peoples and cultures with genders as diverse as your rainbow. And in your goodness, you included all of these people in your stories as markers for the path of your own story. Thank you, God. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for making all of our stories worthy. In the beginning, you came to show us the path to a better world. In the person of Jesus Christ, you came to us and did not discriminate. You came for the hungry, the thirsty, those wasting in prison, those beaten and left to die on the side of the road, those tied to a fence. You came to the sick, the needy, those living and dying with AIDS. You came for the lynched, the assaulted, the sex shamed. And you came for all who allies have betrayed them with a kiss. Jesus, give us the strength to follow your example and help us to leave our safe places in pursuit of justice and a more colorful world. Give us the compassion to help and hold others, regardless of their names, faces, gender identity, sexuality, or social class. Give us your passion, and do not let us stand aside when our friends and families misspeak by omission or from hardened hearts. Today on Pride Sunday, we remember all of our LGBTQ siblings. We pray for all people who are lesbian and gay, we pray for all who are bisexual or pansexual. We pray for those who are asexual. And we pray for those whose sexuality cannot be easily defined. We pray for all of our transgender siblings, be they binary or non-binary. And we pray for the queer, the questioning, the quiet, and the quelled. For all who have never, who have always been on the outside looking in. Be with them, God. Comfort them. Draw them near to you, our great leader and our great spirit. Be with them 
and be with us all as we rise on the wings of the dawn. Be with us all as we wander to the far side of the sea. Hold us and sustain us in the sunshine and in the rain. God, on this day, we lift up to you again the Walton family. We give you thanks for a wonderful celebration of life for Alf yesterday. We raise concerns for those in the congregation who are facing health challenges or have family members who are facing health challenges. We ask that you again bless the kids who graduated this past week and the kids who have finished school. Help them to have a wonderful and safe summer. We give you thanks for all the ways that you are showing yourself to us in the many rainbows of your people, God. And we lift up to you the things that we can only name from the silence of our hearts. It is in Jesus' name, the great equalizer, that we pray all of these things. Amen.